This is the Straight Truth Podcast, biblical answers to difficult questions from a Christian worldview. Recently, Pastor, I was talking with somebody in the church who is uh, pondering, thinking through uh, going on the mission field. And and they're thinking about all the steps of doing that Mm. and what agency they would be working with. They've recently been married, and so it's a husband-wife team thinking about this together. And it got me thinking, well, you know, how does someone know that they're called to be a missionary specifically? Obviously, this is kind of a, is it the will of God question? We've addressed that in the podcast before. But maybe, can you address this specifically to missions? Mm. Um, Obviously, that's that's ministry, uh, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking. But but missions, this person is thinking overseas missions Mm -hmm. uh, in Arab country. You know, uh, uh, looking forward at a very difficult situation. How, How do you answer that? So... Let's just take off the table for a moment the issues of calling, right? Okay. We'll just assume all of that. Okay. They, they've been serving faithfully in their church. Their elder body knows them well. They're qualified for ministry from a character point of view. They've exhibited gifts for ministry in the, in the life of the church. So there's, there's not a question about that. So we'll just take that off the table and mm-hmm. say all that's a given. Mm-hmm. All right. What you would want is a mature perspective of missions work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to idealize that. To imagine, you know, a much easier existence than will be that's true that's reality. So, really so you want to yep. mature. You know, someone who, and there's some things you're not going to know till you're out there. We all mm-hmm. acknowledge that. Same true if you take a, a a local church as a pastor. Yeah, you're going to discover things you didn't know exactly. were there. Yeah. So, so we we get that, but you at least need to know the potential of that. Mm-hmm. So there's that mature perspective that says, you know, this is this is probably going to be harder than we imagine. That's one thing. Obviously, a desire for it. Okay. You know, this is not something someone ought to be guilted into. I, I remember sermons when I was a young believer for, that basically left one with the impression that if you stay in the United States, you're sinning. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's so yeah. many needs all around the world that mm-hmm. if you choose, you're soft yeah. if you choose to stay in the United States. Yeah. And, and I just can't imagine that's the way the Lord, I, I, I see no evidence of that in Scripture, and I can't mm-hmm. see just reasonably how that would be the way that, that someone should be motivated to missions mm-hmm. you know, by being guilted into it. Mm. So do you have a desire for it? Mm-hmm. Is, this, is this what you want to do? And I, I just have seen again and again, Josh, we've talked about this often just privately, you know, how does the Lord lead his people? One of the, one of the providences, obviously scripture, providence, but one of the ways is desire. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. And if I'm not violating scripture, principles of scripture, and my desires are in a particular location, that's usually a pretty good indication this is a way that he's leading me. Third thing I would say, there needs, if you're married, there's got to be unity Mm. between the husband and the wife. Mm -hmm. Never, in my view, and I know there are even missions heroes that you learn about in seminary, you know, that basically disregarded their wife's uh, desires and went off and did it anyway. And we now hold them up as examples. I think that's... I think they're poor examples. No way should a man be dragging his wife to the mission field when she doesn't have a desire to go. Mm, mm. So are you agreed about this? Mm. And again, getting back to the mature perspective for a moment, if you have children, do you understand the pressures they're going to face? These are not reasons not to go, but they're things you need to look full into the face of Mm -hmm. and say, we we understand this and and still have a desire and are willing to do so. How are you going to go? Is your church willing to send you? Mm-hmm. If you're talking about a mission sending agency, make sure they're, they're faithful with the word of God. I've, I've met young people who so desperately want to get on the mission field. Mm-hmm. They have associated themselves with organizations that do not represent their own convictions, their own doctrinal mm-hmm. commitments. That is a bad mistake. Do mm-hmm. not do that. Make sure whoever's going to send you, you're in agreement with their doctrinal positions or you're going to end up in a miserable miserable position if you don't. Those are just some of the things that come to mind. Are there yeah. other things? No, that, that's good. I like those practical considerations. You know, you said leaving aside the calling aspect yeah. in, in, in general. We have discussed that before. Do you think that there is a, a kind of calling specifically to missions or is it only really tied to desire saying, I feel called to the, I call to ministry, but what I really desire to do in ministry is to go, you know, preach the gospel to the lost in a, in a mm-hmm. foreign mission field. Yeah, I don't see a separate calling, okay. uh, as it were, in Scripture. Uh, some would even question whether there's a calling at all. There are yeah. just character qualifications. I do believe there's a calling and a giftedness for, for mm-hmm. uh, the ministry of proclamation. And, and then pra- just practically looking at it, Josh, I've known faithful pastors who ended up being 
tremendous missionaries. And I've known faithful missionaries who come home and end up pastoring churches. So I don't think there's a separate calling as much as just for that season of your life in ministry, because you're gonna be doing the same thing in ministry wherever you go. Winning the lost, discipling those who've been won, mm -hmm. and teaching them all the things the, the Lord has given us to teach them. And that's gonna be true wherever you go. So, you know, if I went to Germany tomorrow or I went to Africa tomorrow to do missions, I'd be doing what I'm doing here, just in a mm -hmm. different location with a different people. There will be language requirements and someone has to have some sort of ability to pick up those those languages. So that's one another consideration someone needs to ask. Do I have the the uh, ability to, to learn the language mm -hmm. because you're going to be very limited if you can't. Mm -hmm. Unless you're going to another nation to minister to people who go to work there, that sort of thing, English-speaking people in another country, maybe you would do that. But those are some of the things that I would consider. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.